Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I started off a while ago and I got not locked out. Don't know why, but anyway, I'm back on the track, Jack. Definitely. Good evening, good evening, and good evening. Good evening, good evening. Welcome to the late one with yours truly, Silver and City. It's a, as usual, um, I think the weather is, is really good. Weather has been really good, I must say, very good. topics of the week um, so far which is Monday is the visit of Donald Trump um, which is taking over the whole um, network news and everything in the UK at present with some great developments and um, just want to touch on a few of it tonight um, not sure if I'll be doing blow by blow of this but just wanted to touch on a few pointers or what should I say, observation of the, the present trip. And uh, I'd love to hear a um, person's views, you know. I've got my own views and my own perspective on different things, but I'd love to hear what other persons have to say in regards to the, the trip by, um, by Donald Trump. Yeah. I'm just... What you can do as well is to share this video. That would be great. Much appreciated. Hi Sharon, good evening. Uh, Abe Mueller, thank you so much over there. On uh, And this is presently on Facebook and it's on Instagram as well as we share. That's good. Well, the, the Conservative Party regarding the, the the contenders for the new leader of the Conservative Party is now 13. It has moved from the Dirty Dozen to the Fabulous 13. And no, I'm not one of them. As a matter of fact, certain persons within the party structure of the, the Conservative is actually saying they need to start to whittle it down because we do not have that long the nation don't need this long what should i say drag out uh what should i say dragged out um political campaign within the party structure when that party structure won't be um incorporating members of the uh general public but just members of the conservative party only so they think that um they don't want to keep it too long they are present 13 sam gima uh, has joined the frame there are now three black persons um in the frame or, or two what should i say um james cleverly who put his and sam giver uh and also uh saji javid asian of course but in the political term of bme he falls within so there's three so there are now 13 hi patricia good evening how are you and hope well so there are three um and that's 13 right so that's interesting days coming on as you know, on the 7th of June, the Prime Minister will step down. I believe this is somewhat um, culminating with the, uh, the visit of Donald Trump. And with the visit of Donald Trump, of course, um, they want that to carry on. And then the Prime Minister then will be the caretaker for the moment. And while being the caretaker for the moment, then she will um, step down eventually, ladies and gentlemen. So that's interesting days which is happening. Uh, so if you want to somewhat um, 
be a part of the leadership you can put yourself put your hat in many people are putting their hat in the frame um, I'm not putting my hat in the frame um, but it is interesting days politics is very important politics that many people tend to shy away from but as you can see politics is something which um, evoke emotion passion and all those sort of things at this time so therefore whether we like it or not it is so important that it affects us directly or indirectly christine good evening how are you um you know so that's it so <clears throat> please what i'd like you to do is to share this video at this present as i'm on as much as possible so the controversial topic of today is uh, the visit of donald trump a very controversial figure there are many terms many words which are used to describe him and I don't have to say it because someone will somewhat help me to say all these different agents and all those sort of things this is very important I sometimes find it is not within my um, scope of thinking to start to to lay out and to start to describe persons you know because people do that very easily very very easily you know and you know I, I try not to somewhat tell Americans how to run their life just like how we didn't like how Obama came to the UK and was trying to tell um, the Brits how to run their referendum and how to vote um, because if they voted a particular way they'll be at the end of the queue that was something which was snuffed at sneezed at by the Brits and they did not like it so therefore who am I to somewhat tell the Americans how that they should actually run their lives and how they should operate as much as possible so I will not try to get involved into the American politics but I'm looking at some level of observation here from from this side you know so one of the uh, hi Lisa how are you doing let me see something here the, the late one the visit of President Trump to the UK as the guest of the Queen he arrived this morning and the big question I ask is why is the opposition leader demonstrating against the president why is opposition not involved or do not want to take part? Why the Speaker of the House do not want to take part and don't want to be involved? And why there's no love lost between Donald Trump and Sadi Khan, the Mayor of London? You see, one of the observations that I can see um, as well is this. They're all men, isn't it? All men. Men. Male. They're all like children who can agree with me they are like children um playing around kidding around throwing words at each other and it is just right down silly one of the the positive things that one can always say no matter who they are that can say about the obama administration that there was a level of decency and there's a level of, um, what should I say, uh, let's move away from the, the politics and sort of policies or whatever, but the level of decency. And Michelle Obama always say this, when they go low, we go high. When they go low, we go high. As I said before, I'm not going to get into the whole ramifications of the policies of, of America now. I'm not going to get into the, 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 the ramifications of um, President Trump and his hands and whatever he's doing. I'm going to look at the office of the President of the United States of America. The office of the President of the United States of America. I always say this in my few talks that the, the office of the President is crucial and that the president is subject to the office of the presidency. Before the president was elected and after the president was elected, I lean more towards the side of Donald Trump to the dismay of many people, right? To the dismay of families, friends, foes, or whatever like that. I stood alone on, on some of my thoughts, some of my thinking. Many people thought it was best that they tried to educate me as how to think. And we say, how can a black man think that way? But I'm used to that from the time I was born, or especially since I come to the UK, where people try to educate you as to how to think. The worst thing that somebody can try to say to me 
is how I should think, how I should speak, how I should walk, and how I should talk. That's the worst thing. Definitely the worst thing. And the worst thing that anybody can say to anyone, even listening here, how you should think, how you should walk, how you should talk, and how you should operate, right? Because we are all individuals with the thinking process. Now, as I said, I'm not going to go into all the different adjectives that person may say of Donald Trump. But what I'm looking at is the reason why he's here. Reason why he's here is to celebrate um, the whole um, D-Day and the, 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 the support that the, the UK did, that the, that the USA did for the, the Brits, the special relationship, okay? Simple as that, the office of the president. I'm not gonna get into what they're saying that um, that the, the, the USA at, at present is, is getting a, a bumper season regarding unemployment is, is down and uh, black people are benefiting or whatever that, that is something for them. Um, Lisa Smart, men put emphasis on negative emotions of their rather than applying wisdom comment from Donovan. Well, somebody just said, right? So I'm looking at the, I'm trying to find some positives out of the air. I'm trying to find some positives out of the air. Amidst the demonstration, amidst the, the words, amidst people cussing each other, calling person's name. I saw a young boy who actually um, uh, is at school and he took a day off or whatever like that to draw uh, 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 in the lawn uh, a dick pic. <laughs> if you don't know what that means, if anything like that. A picture of a penis, if anything like that. Those are the, the sort of things that you're seeing happening you see a mayor having a go the mayor of london having a go at the president of the united states of america and knowing this president and what he's about he always hits back no matter what the question you ask yourself is that necessary are those things necessary really and even before the president hit out at the mayor and link him with the with the mayor from New York, the mayor of New York hit back at the president and actually saying that he's a fan of the mayor of London and it's better to be, not to be a fan of Boris Johnson. And when I look at that, I'm seeing big men operating like kids, silly, childish, pathetic, really. And one reason why I said that there's such a lack of effective and strong leadership in countries these days. Right now for the UK, I stand my ground when it comes on to the whole aspect of Brexit, where I believe that to have a second referendum is that you deny the first referendum. And who will actually guarantee that there will be a honoring of the first referendum in the first place? I don't believe that there'll be a honoring of the first referendum in the first place if you cannot honor the first referendum. And you go, how can you go for the second referendum, right? So therefore, I believe that any leader next, I simply say, and as a person who is in a position that will be able to vote for the next leader of the Conservative Party, ultimately the next prime minister, I simply say, only person that I'll vote for is someone who is saying, leave or no leave at the end of October the 31st. We've got to close this down. We have got to reach to a point whereby we say there's a level of certainty a level of stability, a level of time whereby there's no back and forth. There's too many back and forth. Too many persons absorb and concentrate with power and do not know what to do. So right now, I call it a lack of effective leadership. Somebody said to me, is it that Donald Trump is stronger than the leadership of the UK? I'll say yes. I'll say yes. I definitely say yes. Because you know what you get. Somebody will say, well, he's racist and he's misogynist and everything like that. And he's um, grabbing with his hands. And I laugh at the same time and say, men, you know who you are. This is something that you do all the while. You know what I mean? You know? You know? Not that it to be condoned. But at the same time, one have got to recognize that Certain actions by individuals are not to be condoned, without a doubt. People are racist. People have different things about them. But there's one thing which is crucial. 
it is with the office of a president or the office of someone, even the office of the mayor. I mean, I'll have a go at um, Sadiq Khan. I'll say that he's a joker. I'll say that he needs to spend more time dealing with the whole knife crime issues in the UK, dealing with those issues. But instead, he's focused on having a tiff with the president of America. It's like you're going over into a grade of pay, a pay grade which is above yours. And I believe that he's wrong. Many people will say that he's right because what he's doing is actually representing and speaking up for Londoners. But at the same time, London is the capital of the United Kingdom, of the UK, the capital city. And therefore, the Queen at present, and think about this, the Queen at present is fetting the President of the United States of America at a crucial time. And they're relishing in the past the historical allegiance, the historical relationship, the way they fought together. Because right now, and I kid you not, if anything happens like Russia and one of these guys go crazy, the first country that will come to the support of the United Kingdom will be the United States of America. No question, no doubt, no second thoughts, no begging. That is what has happened. Right? I question again, which of course is the right of people, you know, how people find this time to come out and demonstrate every single time. I, 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 I fail to understand. Because don't people work? But of course, people are right to demonstrate. So I, I won't go there. But these are some of the questions again. It is like there's a need and there's a time for the country to move on. To move on to say, let us just get working. Let us get working now. Let us get sorting out the nation. Right? Brexit has somewhat divided the country to a certain point. That there's this need now to settle down. Not to start to demonstrate. If the pre Listen, at the end of the day, when we Brexit, yes, people are saying yes, yes, when we Brexit, you're going to need to have strong and effective relationship with the United States of America. And that is why I found that another thing, very appalling and totally silly, of course, for Jeremy Corbyn, the opposition leader of the Labour Party, boycotting the banquet tonight. I sat down and I watched that banquet. Well, the bit where they gave the speech. I shudder that Emily Corbyn, who is a foreign secretary, shadow foreign secretary, did not attend. Vince Cable, well, he's, 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 he's going out now. Lib Dem did not attend. These are persons jockeying for position. The Lib Dem actually has been basking in the glory of the, I will say this, the, 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 um, the disputed polls, not disputed polls, but the, you know, protest votes. Yes, I'll say the protest votes. And say that they are at the top level now. And Brexit party is actually saying, we're at the top level. That in case if there's an election, the Lib Dem will win more. In case if there's an election, the, 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 um, the Brexit party will win more. If there's an election now, the Labour Party more likely will win more. And therefore, they're going to have to make some deals. Now, these are persons jockeying for leadership, jockeying for power, jockeying to be ultimately the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, but yet they fail to want to put aside their political differences and their personal gripe and to meet with the office or the President of the United States of America, who they will have to go and talk to, who they will have to go and meet to if they become leaders of this country or Prime Minister. And that is why I say they are jokers. You see, what is happening? I said this to somebody today, that if you're going to be looking at public opinion at every step of the way to move forward, then you're not a leader. Because leaders will have to make uncomfortable decisions alone sometimes to pave the way because you will never ever please everyone. You will never ever please everyone. But you've got to make a decision. You've got to move forward. Those were the hallmarks of the persons like, like Churchill, the Bulldogs, what they stood for. Some people are questioning the UK now. Everything is just, nobody wants to make a decision. Everybody votes more referendum and everything like that. There's no level of certainty. So these guys did not go to the banquet. I watched the banquet, it's lovely. 
lovely. Love when the queen um, made a speech and she trailed or traced or saw the trend of the past. In 1944, when she met with Eisenhower and when she was standing by her father before. And then she met so many different presidents of the United States of America. I believe this was her 113 official sort of banquet of this nature or state visit. And she, she, he praises upon the Americans. She said, Mr. President, your country, Mr. President, the Americans. Miss, so Mr. Trump right there was a figurehead in the office of the prime of the president. It's not about him because anything, listen, the king is dead, long live the king. If the queen dies today, that's it. The queen is dead, long live the king. If Prince Charles dies next day, the queen is dead, long live the king. Why I say that? Because I'm going through the, the succession. Because after Prince Charles would be Prince William. Right? If, if the president of America, anything happens, um, the president is dead. They don't say long live the king. But what they'll talk about next is um, Pence. Pence would be this with the next president. And if anything happened and Pence goes, it will be who? Nancy Pelosi. It just continues. Right? So therefore, the president, the office of the president, operates in that way. Right? So I'm actually coming on just to say how the thinking process is. Because what people fail to understand, and I keep saying this, if you watch Independence Day, Independence Day with, uh, what's his name? Um, um, what's the guy named? Um, Will Smith. Whenever they actually shoot, and whenever they actually attack that particular spaceship, the more they attack that spaceship, the more the spaceship got bigger and stronger. The failure of people to understand with Donald Trump is that the more you give him energy, give him, give him oxygen, the more he flourishes. Right? The more he flourishes. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and good afternoon. My name is Silver and Sidio. For those who are just coming on, hi, Sharnet, how are you? Um, the discussion is about the President of the United States of America who has just arrived in the UK and is on a three-day state visit. And what is happening now? You're having the, the opposition leader um, who's going to demonstrate against him tomorrow at a demonstration. The, the mayor of London um, send him a, make, call him a fascist, whatever like that. The president has hit back just off the train and um, it's just a bit silly. Uh, so, as I said, I would not get into, and as recap, I'll not get into the American politics in the sense of what Americans want to do about their country. And I'll not get into the, the, the personal issues. Um, but all I'm talking about is from a leadership perspective, from the UK side, right? It is very important that the leaders actually engage with the president who represent the office of the presidency that is crucial because the opposition leader could become the prime minister the lib dems doing well in the polls recently could become the president the prime minister and then they will have to go with tail between legs to meet with the president of the united states of america who represent the american people whether the Americans all accept Trump or not, whether they accept him all makes no difference. He is in the office of the president. And that's the thinking that person got to have because you don't have to love someone. You don't have to love any leader, right? Many people work right now in offices where they've got racist boss, where they've got terrible situations. And they've got to stuff it because they know that they're going through a process there. And it's for a season. No president lasts more than eight years. Trump may win. Trump may not win the next election. But is it very important from the UK perspective that there be this level of engagement with the president of the United States of America? So all these demonstrations going on, it doesn't, it won't, it, it, it actually, it strengthens Donald Trump. And I keep saying this. The best way, and this is a secret, shh, this is a secret, as one who follows the political scenery and who wants, who understands some things, the best way to deal with Donald Trump is not to give him any attention. <coughs> shh, shh. 
Don't give him any attention. The more you demonstrate, he loves that. The more you put up a baby blimp or whatever in the air, he loves that because it's generating attention. He doesn't matter. This guy has been going through this for years. This guy, actually, actually this guy has been saying the same message for years. Nothing phase him. But what will phase him is when there's nobody, is when there's no demonstration and there's nobody actually having a go at him or nobody actually saying anything and they just ignore him. So can you imagine he came to London and there's no demonstration, nothing. Man, I think he would say, what's going on really, you know? Why nobody's here? That's my good advice there. So I'm saying right now, we'd want, and, and there's two more days to go. He's going to meet with the Prime Minister tomorrow. Yep. The issue with the Prime Minister now is that it's not going to be any very effective discussion with the Prime Minister because that level of discussion with the Prime Minister is more going to be like a caretaker situation. And, and right now, there's no need to meet with the Prime Minister except for courtesy, uh, a cursory, um, uh, what should I say, courtesy and ceremonial thing because she is not going to be in power in the next few days. She's just going to be a caretaker uh, Prime Minister until we have the new leader for the Conservative Party ultimately the next um the next um the next prime minister of the uk ted anderson said the most powerful in the world whatever people think well you know i tend to agree with that listen I, I i'm a strong believer in strong men you know i don't like weak men i don't like weakness honestly in men who are leaders i don't like the the morning the morning and the the sissy business as we say in jamaica the sissy business you know morning you know and that's one you know i know disrespect you know Guys like Saddam Hussein, I, I never liked when Saddam Hussein went down. You know, even God, I feel those guys. Because those guys were strong guys, you know what I'm saying? And the West did that to them. They had no evidence of what they did. Even with Saddam Hussein, there was no evidence of any weapons of mass destruction. No evidence, you know. Of course, there are many other accusations already. But then if you, if you compare that with what has been happening in the West, in the UK, in America... Then you, you actually say, well, there's more cases for the, the Middle East to go after America or go after the UK, if anything, and go after Russia. You see what I'm trying to say? So there's a lot of hypocrisy. Hi hypocrisy. 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 It is like when people say, oh, we don't want Donald Trump because he's this and that. And yet at the same time, you don't say anything about China over a terrible human rights record. You don't say anything about Saudi Arabia. Those guys beat women, chop off their head and all those sort of things, chop off people's hands, you know, caught in adultery and all those sort of things. Crazy. The UK has fettered some great dictators in the past. Yeah? So that's why I say it's hypocrisy. It's ridiculous. It amounts to nothing. It's not. So what we need to do is settle them. Hey, but at the same time, hey, nothing is wrong. You still can demonstrate. Right to demonstrate and right to all of that, that is important and that is crucial. But as I say, the only way you can actually really reach out to Donald Trump is not to give him any airplay. The more you give him airplay, you give him oxygen, okay? And it's, and it's not going to amount to nothing because right now, he's on a roll. The guy is planning for 2020, 2020 already. He's already planned it. The guy's been, the guy has been actually um, you know, having election campaign from over a year ago calling it keeping america great first he said make america great again he said keep america great again got everything in place now so many people say that i'm a trump lover i've been getting that for a long time you know some people believe that they need to educate me about how america is some people believe that they need to explain to me the whole thing that he's racist that he's a misogynist. That he grabbed women by the, you know? People trying to explain that. But yet at the same time, they do not address what is around in their circles. Those who are immediately in front of them. What I'm trying to say here is placing things into perspective. On a higher level, taking the high road. There's no need for Sadi Khan to be attacking the president or calling him names. Just do what you got to do. He's not gonna last forever. Sadi Khan is lecturing him about abortion and all those sort of things. A very controversial subject, right? Spinning machine, Sadi Khan. 
Anyway, I didn't vote for Sadiq Khan. He is my mayor, but he doesn't speak for me. He's the mayor of London, but he doesn't speak for me. Yeah? And just like how some people in America would say, the president of America, he's a president, but he doesn't speak for me. But I go one further by saying, while I didn't vote for Sadiq Khan, and while I do not have great um, respect for, his, for what he's doing, I got respect for his office, and he's my mayor, but I don't support him. Does that make sense? There's a big dis distinction there. So I would not, um, like, you know, you know, call him derogatory names. But I'll say that he's, he's wasting time. I'll say that he needs to focus on things. I'll say that it's ridiculous. It's totally silly, ludicrous for you to be spending time when you could be spending so much time right in Tottenham. Tottenham, I've been getting some texts. Uh, last night, there was some stabbings or whatever like that going on where a lady was sending a voicemail saying that... Um, there's, there's, there's going to be some stabbings or whatever like that and saying children to come off the road because, you know, we just finished midterm a while ago, a lot of children out there. So therefore, it is very important to be aware. Where is it? That is what. That is what he should be doing. That is what the Sadi Khan, the mayor of London, should be doing. And that is why I oppose him not engaging with the process. I find... Um, Mr. Um, Jeremy Corbyn, the office of the opposition leader, the, the Queen's opposition, turned down the Queen invitation. Lib Dem turned down the Queen invitation. And these persons are wanting to be the leader of this country. I forbid it. It will not happen. And right now, as many persons have said, what we need to do is we need to get rid of a lot of the MPs who are out there. A lot of the MPs who are in power now, they are want them to be deselected and get a new crop of MPs in, persons with gravitas and great power to lead this nation forward. That's what we are because what I see right now is pure people just cussing. I mean, you see it in the House of Commons. They are titter titter, tit tit for tat, pathetic, silly. All right? Everything is just pathetic. So my observation is that big men operating like children, lack of any semblance of taking the high road, Right, and as I said, with what Obama said, Mrs. Obama, when they go low, we go high. This is a time where we are having a lack of strong leaders in all facets of society. And you're seeing that because if these leaders, what you're seeing at the top there, and the news today, all the news I've been talking about is trying to find a controversy. Oh, he called Meghan Markle nasty. When you place it into perspective, what it was is that someone, the reporter said, Meghan Markle said this of you, blah, blah, blah. And Donald Trump responded and said, oh, she has been nasty. She has been nasty to me, if anything, like, oh, you know, just like all the people be nasty. He didn't read really, I'm not trying to justify, but, you know, but it, it's placing it into context. People are actually talking about the time when he came the last time and he walked around the Queen. A reporter had to correct and said the Queen actually was on the wrong side. And the Queen actually realized that she stopped and then Donald Trump got caught up in this whole thing and he waited. Put it in perspective. The news today have been talking about the, the tip between Donald Trump and Sadi Khan. Ridiculous. The opposition leader not going to the banquet. Ridiculous. Try to find all the negative angles. They're not seeing that this could be an opportunity to foster relationships. This could be an opportunity to sit down and say, how can we, in the event of an effective Brexit, have a good trade working relationship with the United States of America, the strongest partner, I believe, not the EU. Right? The EU is just draining the UK. Trust me. Let's effective Brexit and let's get out. Simple as that. So therefore, I endorse Donald Trump trip to the UK. I don't subscribe to his personal ways and style. Just like how I will not subscribe to some personal style and actions of even persons who are on Facebook or even on this, this live at present. I will not subscribe. And I will not expect persons to even subscribe to some of my ways because I've got ways that you may not like. So it's a lot of hypocrisy out there. Hypocrisy to a high level. When they go low, we go high. What we want is strong and effective leaders in power, in parliament, in the mayor's office. We need to get rid of Sadiq Khan. Yes, we're going to get rid of him. Let's get Sean Bailey in. Let's get Man of Stature. 
men of stature who will actually look at the bigger picture because guess what and i tell you this and this is for free right all of sinned and fallen short of the glory of god let's put it in a perspective let's preach all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. No man is perfect. No man is perfect. So everyone will believe that they are perfect and, say, and that you've got to get this perfection. Is that you want God. Remember this again. In the Bible, let's preach. The Israelites, the Jews said, they want a king. God said, why well, you want a king? I'm the king. I'm the man. You know, I'm the big daddy. They said, we want a king. I said, do you know what is going to happen? They're going to give you hardship and blah, blah. Yes, they want a king. Give them a king. That wasn't the plan. Right? God set up kings and he removed kings. You're going to have some bad kings and some good kings at the same time. But guess what? It's an orchestrated order of God. That's why I said it's a principle, a godly principle, whereby God will put leaders among us. And I believe... Whether you like it or not. This is my view. Donald Trump is here for a purpose and for a time and for a season. Theresa May is there for a purpose and a season and a time. Leaders in strategic positions in this world now are there for a season and a time. Because God is still in control. Ladies and gentlemen, believe it or not, I kid you not. And I close with that statement. God is still in control. So enjoy the trip by Donald Trump. I endorse it, I encourage it, and I wish him all the best, and I wish him peace. I wish, because you see, when you wish leaders peace, even Sadi Kenny wish peace, Jeremy Corbyn wish peace, Vince Kennedy wish peace. Um, leaders, when you wish peace upon them, you're wishing peace upon yourself, because you want le you want good, godly leadership over your life because you are subject unfortunately but you like it or not to the nation where you reside in ladies and gentlemen okay and that is why i'm taking this i'm not taking this discussion into the world misogynist and racist and all those sort of things i'm not going not going there I'm not going into the point whereby trying to tell americans who is trump and what trump is and blah 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 that's their decision what i'm talking about is a higher order Taking it to a higher level, ladies and gentlemen. That is powerful. That is crucial. But most importantly, we need men of strength, of character, men of substance, men who are not easily moved by emotions, men who are not easily get into tit for tat and going around like sissy and all those sort of things and cussing and moaning and demonstrating everything. Too much demonstration, man. Everybody demonstrating. That person come, let's demonstrate. That person come, let's demonstrate. When do we work and get things going? I can never get to demonstrate. I got to be working to feed my family. You know? Anyway, let's leave that there before I continue. Now. I wanted this to be quick and just brief and just straight to the point and get the message on. So, excellent speech, as I said, by the Queen, charting her history, and Donald Trump giving tribute to the Queen as well, as much as possible. So, uh, I may be coming on again, maybe a couple of days, when I see how things unfold. Uncle Joe, good afternoon. And, um, and ladies and gentlemen on Instagram land, thank you so much. And of course, please look out for my overview talking more about the 13 contenders for the leadership of the Conservative Party. 13, right. Now, as one of the um, senior persons in the Conservative Party said, some need to come out of it because guess what? It's going to be too long for that job. We need to get that leader in place as much as possible. But of course, it is a democratic process and it's got to follow through accordingly. And um, the, the, the members will only be able to vote for two and it's all going to whittle down within the parliamentary scheme of things. All right. And one of the things I must say is that last week I had some very interesting occasion where I went to James Ross Hunter, the five years since the death of this young man. And um, at this place in Sydenham, it was beautiful, it was wonderful. And um, I was able to speak to the young people there about identity. It's one of my strong topic, identity and knowing who you are. And if you can get a chance to watch that video or the clip which I post on Instagram, do check it out. Follow me on Instagram, which is in, which is Silburn TV. Follow me on Instagram, there, Silburn TV. It's it's powerful. It's a very simple message, but it is very powerful as much as possible. But there was one bit which was very interesting. I must say, was when I spoke about as people, we need to be very strategic, and then I use the example of. Um, Sadi Khan 
and uh, and um, Sajid Javid, and the response were a bit very um, somewhat you know, a little bit negative like you know, and but that's my next message which I wanted to speak about is being strategically positioned. Being strategically positioned is very crucial in all things. And the message I was given there was that Sajid Javid is the Home Secretary, who is Conservative, and Sadiq Khan, who is the Mayor and is um, Pakistani, both of them are Pakistani, one, one is Labour, one is Conservative, but yet you never see them arguing or whatever that they may, based on political circles, but in a way they are strong for their communities and we need to be strong for our communities as well. And that is why I'm talking about taking this thing to a high level. Let's not, let's not be led. Cause I see so many misinformation going on, you know, so many misinformation about Trump and everything like that. So many misinformation about that and this. You've got to analyze it for yourself and don't be led by others. Think for yourself. And when people are trying to actually dis dissuade you or move you away from your thought pattern, remember what is happening. They are trying to get you into their thought pattern. Right? So you've got to stand your ground. It may come across as rude sometimes, but you've got to stand your ground because if you don't stand your ground, then guess what? You're going to miss out completely on what you are about. You cannot miss out on who you are. Because if you miss out on who you are, then you become someone else who you will not even recognize one day. So it's better you stand your ground. Listen, it is better to be wrong and knowing who you are and have that confidence than to follow and don't know who you are, whether it's right. I know it sounds a bit very, very, a bit funny, but trust me, it is better to know who you are and what you're about. Okay? Um, Lorna Foster, good evening as well. Um, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for coming on. And I uh, look forward to... To hearing from you and look forward to um to talking to you next time around and peace out and have a have a good what should i say a good um and wonderful um you know summery day the weather is beautiful man but it's beautiful all right so peace out all the best cheers 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 guys bye bye bye